<laughs> oh, hey, we're recording. Look at that. <laughs> Just going to sit here and drink some coffee. Forget that so we're recording. Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> got mine. Mm. I see you got your racer, your racer coffee mug. The the legend of the racer coffee mug will always. That's the one. Yeah, exist. that's the one that I I don't mind. This mine's gone. I don't know. Yeah, this is the one. I got the new over, one this year. Yeah, you ran over this one at King of the Hammers. It's got a nice, uh, nice dent in the bottom of it. Um, it survived. I've kept it all throughout this time. I use it multiple times a week. I love it. Um, the next time I go to Hammers, I may grab a new one. But I mean, for the last couple of years, this one's worked just great. So I love it. So I can <laughs> run over that, but I clearly can't run over enough rocks to finish lap two. Right. So <laughs> on myself. No, that mug is gone. Yeah. That one, uh, that's gone. Like I had to get the one. It, it's a, like a travel version of this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a great mug, but it's not. It's not that twenty whatever that one you've got that twenty ounce or whatever that is. Yeah, I think it's like a 16 or 18 ounce. Yeah, that thing's pretty awesome. That thing's pretty awesome. It's perfect size, though. So, yeah, I love it. I I just, I hate that I don't have mine anymore. I'm a little jealous of you, but oh well, I digress. (laughs) It is, uh, we are now what? We are exactly one week, one week from today. We will be out in the mountains of Eastern Tennessee wheeling at Trail Days. Uh, Yeah. Sign ups are over. You can't sign up anymore. Sorry. No, it's over. T shirt order is in. It's done. It is done. That was, and that was, I was talking about t-shirt order. Jennifer, uh, triad Paul prints, Greensboro, North Carolina. She does a lot of, she know they do a lot of our shirts and stuff for outlaw. Um, mm-hmm. and she does a lot and ships them. And she reached out to me. I didn't even reach out to her. She reached out to me when she heard about the event and just stepped right up and said, look, I want to, I want to donate shirts for your, for your drivers, for your participants. So she did that. And, uh, I think that we put the order in the orders in are being made. Uh, I think we're actually going to release the new, off-road, quote unquote, off-road shirt at Trail Days next week. Got a, yeah. got like a dozen yeah. and a half of those coming. I'm pretty excited about that shirt. That shirt's going to be pretty cool. That one, I've shown a couple people that design, and it may be it may be even cooler than than Trail Bra, which Trail Bra is my current favorite. Yeah, close second <laughs> being the Spotters being ignored since 1941 shirt. I love that mm-hmm. one. Sold several of those out at Cheap Invasion. Um, Go on, well, wait, we, remember, um, a couple weeks ago. Should we now. do a little teaser on here and listeners of the podcast or viewers of the podcast will get to see a little uh, sneak peek of the Yeah, it would have to be first. a viewer. So insert cool picture. Okay. And just like that, it's over. <laughs> so hope you were looking. Yeah. Hope you were uh, looking. No, that's that was one of my favorites that I've designed so far. It was definitely it's challenging sweet. to cut the a, a Jeep silhouette out of the, the image. It, it's a several tries for me to get right but i like it uh i like the coloring on it i think they're they're gonna turn out really really cool so i'm happy to get my hands on that was yet another design whether it be tiktok reels or shirt designs that i message you at like 10 o'clock at night as i'm going to bed be like (laughs) oh 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 (laughs) and i only do that because i know for a fact that if i don't do and i don't ever expect you to message back sometimes you do sometimes you don't but i know that i'll forget like i can't just screenshot it and like oh i'll remember it tomorrow because then you forget the screenshot too I'm actually going to, I'm a hundred percent and I'll come up with the screenshot like weeks later, like, oh, now I don't think now it's not as cool or, yeah. or I found something else cool or something like that. So, uh, at least with this one, I got it to you. Um, and we don't have to worry about it. And yeah, so got rid of a bunch of shirts at Jeep Invasion. So now we need to have some more and I'll, I'll give, I'll give one more last little thing to Jeep Invasion. Cause we didn't really talk about it was I was there, you were watching from social media and I kind of wanted to know, and this will be the last we talk about Jeep Invasion what the coolest thing that you saw, what the coolest thing I saw being there and what you thought was the coolest thing you saw uh, based on like social media. Cause I didn't really see any of the social media this year. I wasn't following it because I was there and you weren't there. So you had to follow by social media. So I'm interested to see um, what you thought was the coolest thing you saw based on the social postings. Um, Yeah. There's one that, that really stood out and, and this is a wild time to, to see this, especially at an event like this, but, um, on social media, I saw so many three ninety twos that I think I just kind of stopped caring about seeing three ninety twos, which is super weird because that's, it's, it's such a nice vehicle and it's such a cool model Jeep. And I saw so many pictures of Anvil three ninety twos, but, and with that being my absolute favorite, they all looked the same. There was none of them that really, really, really stood out. And there's a couple companies that brought out rigs and company rigs are, are company rigs. You kind of see those a little bit everywhere. Those are always pushed on social, but there's one in particular, it's owned by an individual. 
Um, I think it's freaking cool, man. Um, well, actually, we're, we're going to call it two. It's kind of a tie. Uh, Moto built El Jefe. Um, by far. Oh, yeah. Yep. One of my Super favorite cool. builds of yep. all time. Yep. Um, to YJ stretch to LJ length on the body, stretched wheelbase, running 40. I think it's currently on 42 inch Mickey Thompson's, which is why I, one of the yep. reasons why I bought 42 Mickey Thompson's because I was like, yeah, that, that looks good. Um, but the other one that I think stands out just as much is a, uh, a guy on Instagram called Rockzilla. Uh, it's a green, like a, a uh, what's that, that JK green color, gecko green. I think it's gecko, gecko yeah, green gecko. Yeah. with some light blue in it. And I want to say it's like on 40. Fours, forty eight, something. It's some massive bogger tire, Rockwell axles, and it's actually done very, very there. well. Oh. Um, it's, it's clean. It's yeah, it's super clean. He wheels it. It's not like your beat down TJ on boggers. Um, it's it's very, very, very well done. Uh, but I saw that thing on social media everywhere. I saw videos of him getting pulled over. I guess because of the lift heights too much for Tennessee, which is which is odd. Um, but it's even no, he uh it stands out and it, it's cool it's well done um it's it's nothing about that build was done cheaply so i like it but el jefe also is it's hard to not like el jefe <laughs> okay i i saw that one um rolling around he was actually we were doing some photos for some social media under the bridge at quaker steak and he rolled through there right as we were getting in there and then he came back a little bit later and was doing some pictures on the the creek side Mm -hmm. And I don't know if those got posted or not. I didn't see it. But um, and as for whether I didn't actually know he wheeled it, I had no idea. I didn't know. It's stupid clean. Oh, yeah. Like maybe it might be dirtier when I get up close to it. But from the 15 yards away, 20 yards away, whatever it was when I saw it, it was actually really, really clean. So I think that was, yeah, that's pretty cool. I did not know that. So and as for my coolest thing I saw, uh, well, you're going to have to wait till we come <laughs> back right after the cool little intro we have. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And we are back, so now I have to... I guess I got to come up with the coolest thing I saw at Jeep Invasion before we kiss Jeep Invasion 2024 goodbye, put a bow on it, and we don't speak of it again until next year. Uh, coolest thing I saw, which is going to surprise some people that know me, was actually an audio system, a new audio offering by a company called Wet Sounds out of Texas. Wet Sounds has been huge, high-end um, boat, marine, even they play around in motorcycle stuff, have been in that game for years and they are really, really high in stuff. And I was just walking around outside with some other people from Outlaw. And I said, you know, we gotta we gotta do something audio in the four by e. It's a it's a show vehicle. Like we're gonna wheel it. We went straight to Moab. Obviously, it's going out wheeling at trail days. I said, I think that's something that I didn't really take too seriously in Reaper. And I really didn't do anything in the in the Hemi JT. It was more about engine sounds than it was audio sounds. But uh the four by e doesn't make a lot of its own sounds. <laughs> So I have to do something for cool sounds. And it was actually Ben <laughs> yeah. from Charlotte. He's like, yeah, I was, have you seen the wet sound system? I was like, no, they, they made boat stuff. I got some wet sound stuff in my boat. And he said, no, 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 they got a new kid. It's coming out like next week or so. We, we'll go see it. So we were walking on the side and we saw it. And the wet sounds guys get me, get me over there at their booth. And they're like, oh, you're, you know, you're that outlaw guy. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's me. And goes, oh, we've, we've actually stopped into like every single outlaw off-road trying to get you guys to sell telling you about this new kit that's coming out. And I'm like, wait, is it already out? And he goes, no, no, it's not out. It's coming out, mm -hmm. and we need installers. I was like, okay, whatever. Just show me what you got. And it is, this, it is this kit, and it is basically, from an installer standpoint, it's only supposed to take like seven or eight hours, which sounds like a long time. But for what this system is, it works with the factory head unit. It can work with a stinger. It can work with anything. But it comes in this kit that is this big box that sits in the rear floor. 
and it's on hinges. And in this box, I think it's two pieces actually, are the amp and the speakers hmm. for stage one kit. Stage one kit is the amp and these speakers in this thing. And it replaces also all of the other speakers. It replaces all of the it replaces the stuff in the sound bar with six by nines. Um, it replaces the knee speakers. It replaces the the whatever you call those, the tweeters or whatever up on the dash. And then it adds these big boy speakers. I think it's I think it's it's just two big speakers subs mm -hmm. uh, in the back. And it is this box, but you can move this box. It's on a hinge, so mm -hmm. it sits flat on the floor, which is actually where it sounds best because that means the subs down fire. But then when you're like at a show, you're an event, whatever, you take this box and it flips up on the hinge and it points the subs out, out the back. Okay. Of the Jeep. All right. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people like DS-18. I don't. I am not a fan of DS-18 mm -hmm. because they are basically, to me, they're loudspeakers. They sound great aw far away and they sound like crap up close. Yeah. And I don't like them at mid-range. If you're just trying to drive around and listen to some loud music while you're just driving your Jeep, uh, it's, I just don't like it. It's not clean. Yeah. Um, it's not to the level I think that they want people to believe. Now, for shows and just being obnoxious and being stupid loud, yeah, they're great. But it seems like Wet Sounds really, really put in a lot of time, effort, research, which they do that on all their products, to make these things sound great, and they do. And what I really liked was when it was folded down, it was basically just an elevated rear floor. So you could still put your cooler in there. You can still put your recovery gear in there. You can still put... All of the things that you want to put in there to go off road, you could still put in there, and it was able to be done. You know, because we get requests for audio all the time, and I'm like, eh, we're not really 12 volt guys. Like we do yeah. wiring, but we don't do audio, right? <clears throat> and I told him that he said, no, no, no. This we we got this installed. We got this. It's made for basically off road tech. That's what we want to do. And I said, okay, we'll show me. And well, they walked me through it. And I was like, okay, well, you're right. <laughs> And then we sat in this Jeep in their booth for a while, and we listened to a bunch of different genres of music, and, and I was impressed. Um, impressed to the point where there is a system. They have a stage one and a stage two, and the stage one is what I just described. Stage two adds these giant 12-inch pods, and they're not subs. They're like 12-inch speakers on the right behind the C-pillar, and they backfire, kind of like a DS-18 loudspeaker, kind of like that. And that's the, state, that's the level two or stage two. Um, the casings are paintable, so if you want to paint them like to match your color, your Jeep, or whatever, you can do that. I'll be painting mine, obviously, for by blue because I'm going to go full on mall crawler look. Um, and yeah, so we we got the talking, and then we talked, and everybody came home. And not only am I going to put a system in there, like I'm 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 sold up the river on these things. Like we're going to have them in the booth at uh, Jeep Jam at Myrtle Beach in October. Like I am I am all in. I'm I'm pretty excited about it because um, I told him I was like, look, I like I love putting stuff in my Jeep. But it's not just my Jeep. This is a Jeep that you know people see. We set the example. Like it has to be something that we can sell and install. So we took care of that part of it. There was meetings. There was phone calls, blah, blah, blah. But long story short, I'm going to actually put this system in its level two iteration in the 4xE. Uh, not for trail days. It won't be in there for trail days. Um, we only got a week for that. But it will be in there for... Um, maybe Gears and Beers in Charlotte, maybe. Well, but definitely Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam in October and the wet sounds guys will be there with us for that. So pretty excited about that. It's not a Jeep, but it is a cool thing. That's definitely not something that I would be known for, yeah, for, uh, for, for wanting sure. to put in a Jeep, but I'm pretty excited about it. I thought it was cool. Sounds amazing. It is pricey. Not going to lie. There is a limited market for it. It is an expensive system, mm -hmm. but that system is geared toward, um, <clears throat> I don't know if I'd quite say like true audio file level, mm -hmm. but it's pretty dang close. I mean, it's, it's I was, extremely difficult to get to audio file level in a Jeep, anyways. Just yeah, because you can't. you're you get you, it's so hard to account for the top being off because oh, it's so the, bad. The sound is completely different when the top and doors are off, mm -hmm. or if you have half doors on versus everything being enclosed. Yep. Um, <clears throat> no, the last time, um, oh man, I want to say his name's is it Mason? Yeah, that, Mason. Um, that he came to Charlotte. Um, I was walking around. This is when the LJ was like in pieces, pieces. It wasn't even like remotely close to being done and he got excited about it and he was like look when the lj is done he's like give us a call he's like and i i think i actually do want to do something very similar to that um maybe utilize um some more of their like wake tower speakers the lj doesn't need anything special or flashy but i do want some good sounding speakers in there that can yeah. that can bump on the trail um i've got well, a this is a specific the, jl the kit they noises. don't have anything <laughs> They don't have anything for JT yet. They don't have anything for JK. Mm -hmm. They just—they're just now breaking into this market. 
like yeah. vehicle specific kits. Yeah, but they've got um, sound bars and and they speaker they pods do. and stuff like that they too. Do. And they've also yeah. got component speakers, which mm -hmm. I'm will be more than happy to toss those in the uh, yep. in the dash convert. I think he said the smallest they have is a five and a half or six inch speaker. I think I can convert oh, darn. the uh, dash speakers to that, um, and then do like one of their subwoofers in the back, build an enclosure for it, um, and then some pods in the back. <clears throat> I think that would actually be overkill for the LJ. Nah. Yeah, I remember him showing me the very prototype of the JL kit, and even the prototype was freaking cool. And it like yeah, it, it is. put out some it sound, is. and it sounded good. Yeah, um, I can't wait to be blasting some InSync so. and Christina Aguilera on the trails. <laughs> <laughs> I better hear it. I That's as much popping. Dude, I have a playlist. I, I kid you not. That was a joke for years. And when I used to go to Windrock all the time, and now I'm getting back into that, I made a playlist of just obnoxious 90s, just – pop music and it was like in sync and backstreet boys and like yeah. boys to men britney Sp christina aguilar like all of all that of them. all of that absolutely and with the, i had those big uh those rear facing speakers on reaper and i would just blast it to people behind me and uh oh it was good it was good you never See, knew would, what was going to come would, up next i would enjoy that like i i love stuff like that so it could be some motown philly it could be some hit me baby one more time or some <laughs> bye, little bye, wu-tang bye. little <laughs> I don't have any Wu-Tang. I'll have to get on that. I didn't have any Wu-Tang on there because that's not pop. I mean, this was like straight up bubble gum pop. Yeah. Oh, dude, straight up. So I'll have to do that <laughs> at some coming to a trail near you. Yeah. I just, I, I, that happened actually that, that initially started on trail 38 on a little school bus at Windrock. We had done 15 and then like little mule, which is trail 46. And uh, we were on 38 and I was just, I was, I don't know. I was feeling like a dummy that day, I guess. And I just started playing some like in sync or something. Cause I'd ran out of, I, we were like, it was a long weekend. Just I'd ran out of music. like music I wanted to play. Cause I had a playlist yeah. of like stuff to play on the trails and I'd run it. I'd just gotten bored of it. You know, it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? Let's just, let me just be an idiot. I was up front. I was leading. I was like, let me be dumb. So I just parked the Jeep like up the trail a little bit and came back to spot people over a little school bus. And I was just blasting. I put it on some like 90s pop station on Sirius. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and it just it just it, it took on a life of its own, and well, I then can't for Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. What we should do get 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 everything installed, have you run the obstacle course at almost full volume, and just let people turn it into a party. I mean, this could so be a thing. I, I'm, I'm not opposed <laughs> to it. I'm not 100 percent opposed to it. It could be fun. It's just it's just fun, man. I I try not to, you know, it's like that whole trail bra t shirt which starts as trail leader. It's just mm -hmm. I just try not to take myself too seriously out there. You know, there's a time to be serious, like when you're in the race car. But even then, like if you heard some of the comms between Rob and I, we still don't try to. I mean, there's a time to get serious and lock it down. There is. But that's usually, I mean, I'm not on the trail to get serious. And lock, I'm out on the trail to have yeah. fun. Yeah. So why not be a dummy and an immature idiot? And, I mean, why not? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going to do some of it. I mean, even in the 4 by e now, I've got the sub changed. I changed out the speakers in the sound bar. I changed out all the speakers have been changed out. It's been upgraded now, not to wet sounds level, like twenty mm percent -hmm. to that. But it, you know, with the top off and stuff, which I, we'll see. I'm driving the four by e out there, so I'm not going to take the top off. I may leave the time. I'm staying at a hotel, so I probably have to be in the top on. But mm -hmm. I still run on the windows and crank some tunes. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. why not? So, um, oh, I did want to. I know we're kind of, and I really like this. But we're not really like super strict topic driven anymore i do have a new segment yeah. today that i'm going to get to and we're going to tease this a little bit it's called um adulting is hard <laughs> <laughs> i haven't really Adult told you what this is, is yet so no okay um, it's going to be a segment called uh adulting is hard and basically what it is, is on facebook though so. it is me going around facebook <laughs> and just looking at actual you know they say there's no such thing as a stupid question there uh, yes there is there yes, are. there absolutely is. And I'm just going to find stuff that's like absolutely like turn over your adult card. Like, <laughs> you, what are you, five? Like, that's the segment. So adulting is hard. Well, that's going to come up in a little bit. And we're going to still do uh, we're going to still do the mailbag. But first, because we are coming up to trail days, not that I want to talk about trail days. We've already talked about that. Everybody knows signups are over. It's it's a thing. It's happening. Um, but have you, you know, I was talking to Lynn Whitehead, who mm -hmm. is um he is a how do we say this? He is a big fan of Outlaw Off Road. He's a great, I mean, great. Can, he's been a great ahead, ambassador. We can go ahead and tease something a little bit here. I yeah, think. I guess we can because it's pretty much official. The the, the paperwork's yeah. already been signed. 
Lynn is actually going to be one of the partners in the new um, location that Outlaw Offroad is opening coming early 2025, which will be in Knoxville, Tennessee. So Knoxville, Tennessee, we're going to be all up in you. We're coming. We're coming we are for coming. East Tennessee. We're coming for you. We, so um, we, I love we Knoxville. I actually Texas. went. Yeah. People don't. Not people don't realize. I went to Farragut High School, which is like 20 miles from Windrock. Mm-hmm. Um, and we used to ride mountain bikes out there. We used to do. We used to do all that stuff. So you know, when my my uh, my love affair with Windrock goes back to the early to mid 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, that area, that whole area. Uh, there's a lot of mountain bike trails out there. That's where I started. Kind of really started off roading and mountain biking was really in that area of Eastern Tennessee. So I've got a I got a long standing relationship there, but. We started talking, and Lynn lives there. He lives in Maryville, which if you live that area, you say Maryville. You don't say Maryville, okay, people? Oh, no. Uh-uh. It's not like Knoxville. You say Knoxville. It says Maryville. Mm-hmm. It's spelled Maryville, I know, but it's Maryville, okay? Lynn lives in Maryville, which is just a little bit south of Knoxville. And he can be at Windrock in like 45 minutes. I hate him so much for it. That's awesome. But he is going to be the partner, uh, one of the partners, Um in the new Knoxville location. So he knows that area really well, is really, really involved in that local community, has really been instrumental in bringing business from Knoxville to the Nashville location. Yeah. Um, because of that, he his Jeeps were built at Outlaw Off-Road Nashville. Him and his wife, they'll both be there logoed up um, at Trail Days. So we were talking, and he offered his services to to help us with the trails. I mean, it's because of Lynn that we have, we have a coffee truck out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every morning at Trail Days, Friday and Saturday morning. Um, in fact, if you're watching this, you're going to Trail Days. Don't buy your coffee off-site. Come to Windrock. Mm-hmm. Show up a few minutes early. Get your coffee. This is a veteran-owned food truck, coffee truck. He heard what we were doing. It's an hour away from him, guys. He's not. He doesn't live local. He lives further away. And he was a little bit hesitant about doing it at first, but when he found out what it was for, it was veteran-owned. Um, he said, you know what, I'm going to come out there. You know, if you guys would help kind of push that, I'm going to be there. So this is me kind of starting to fulfill that obligation there that I happily agree to. It is a veteran owned coffee truck. They're going to be there. I hear Lynn says the coffee is freaking amazing. So I look forward to getting me a couple of cups of that, but Lynn and I were going over trails and I know the trails at Windrock pretty good. Um, I don't think I know them as well as, um, Lynn, you mm-hmm. know, I know every square inch of you of you are. I've been there. You know, it's 45 minutes down the road. Um, but Lynn goes there like it's his job. Like, well, now it kind of is going to be. He actually works <laughs> in Oak Ridge right down yeah. the road. He goes towards Windrock every day to, to go to work when he goes to work. So, you know, we're looking at that and I'm going, you know, I had this conversation before, but like we're trying to figure out like who's going beginner, who's going intermediate, you know, what kind of rigs do they got? And you're trying to, you know, kind of match up trail ratings with rig capabilities, drivers, all that kind of stuff. And you realize really, really quick that the more places you go wheel, the more dumb <laughs> trail rating systems are. Yes. Right? It's the, it's insane. It's a, it's a broken system. Like it's, it's not the but, same across how do the you, board. But there's <laughs> it's a system, it's a problem with no repair. You can't repair. Right. Like you can't. Because there's never gonna be um a uniform ranking system. There's just right. not. There's just not. So the trail rankings at Windrock are done by Windrock people. And I'm not saying they're wrong, but it's a totally different system than if you go right down the road to AOP or mm-hmm. if you go down to Hawk's Pride or if you start going out to um, Disney in Oklahoma or if you go to Moab yeah. or you go – they're all so different. Because I can I promise just, you I a black trail at AOP is not the same as a black trail at – Hell Windrock. no. Black trail at AOP – you better have a tube chassis buggy or a rock bouncer because that's pretty much the only thing you're getting up at. But not even all the black trails at Windrock are the same. No, like I don't, (laughs) I don't, I don't claim to know what they're using. Um, I, you know, my thing, I think you and I talked about this a couple of years ago. I think that trail rating systems should be based on a stock, a well-provisioned stock vehicle. So like these days would be, you know, what can a stock, how is it for a stock Rubicon? But then like there's trails out there a stock ribbon con can't freaking do. Like, so how do you rate that? Like a don't do me black? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't I don't freaking know. So right. and then you gotta change it. And then who says that the Jeep Rubicon is the base? What mm-hmm. who made who died and made the Rubicon? I I don't know. So I don't know what the system for that is unless you have one person that goes to every you can't do it. And then everybody's gonna bitch about that person being wrong. So yeah. You know, because welcome to the welcome to the world of Facebook. Hence the reason we're doing adulting is hard. I, I don't know how you fi- can you fix that. I don't. No, nah, you know, I really, 
I would like to think there is a, a solution to it, but I really don't think it's a one one ticket solves all solution. Um, I know there's I forget the guy's name. Um, there's one guy that's gone out, and I want to say every year, every couple of years, he produces a new book. Um, I think all trails or something where he goes out and photographs the trails. He gives, you know, he takes his rig through everything and and tries to be as consistent as possible at ranking it, mapping it, listing out obstacles, taking pictures of those obstacles. I think um, the last I heard, I want to say Onyx is trying to do something similar. Um, they're trying to implement some of that stuff of like user generated content uh, to their platform, but I don't think that it's a, it's a, it's a, easy solution by any means other than having trail experience um, and just knowing if you're taking a group out there, hey, this is what we're going to hit. These are the set trails that we're going to hit. And this is what I consider easy, intermediate, and very difficult. And here's how we would suggest building that to those levels. Um, And unfortunately, that's just not the same across the country. It just requires a lot of one person or a group of people. to be, have a lot of experience to, to run across the country and wheel. Um, and maybe that's something that can be organized of, of location specific groups. But I mean, I that would know. break down. I mean, the Northwest is not the same as, uh, middle California where, you know, rock racing kind of started and that's very different from Southern California. Mm, and then that's Johnson a good Valley. point. No, that's Johnson very good Valley point. is different from New Mexico and Arizona and then the Midwest and then Denver and the Rockies. And it, it just gets into this thing. And then none of that is even close to being the same as the Southeast. So I feel like yeah. it would have to, if, if there's a solution, it would be very regional, um, very regionally based, I think is the only way to, to do that. And then everyone's going to have to agree on. Some <laughs> Everyone agree, <laughs> which is the most difficult yeah, part right. of all of that. Uh, the ranking is. Oh, easy, you lost it's, me. It's yep, the, you lost me. I'm gone. This is different. Yeah. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, so, yeah. I, yeah, I maybe don't, there's I don't think you can. I think the only solution is you kind of just hit on it. I think the only real way to know where what you can do, where you can go, where you can't go, is experience in that specific area. You know, just like right now, I'm relying on. Lynn a lot because I've been to Windrock in a couple of years and he's like you know we were talking about Trail Thirty, and he said um, he's like yeah we could do Trail Thirty here it's a good one for it's a great trail for obstacles and I'm going what Trail Thirty are you talking about and he goes no no you don't understand it did this when it rains it did this and it's gotten washed out now there's these great obstacles and I'm like he's like yeah I was just there a couple weeks ago and I'm like well okay that trail has changed right. because it's nature mm-hmm. it is nature you know he was telling me you know a good beginner run I've always loved to go like. You go up G Road, you go to 4, you go to 19, you cut down 41, and you cut off the first part of 26. You ride 26 out to the shelter, take a hard left at the shelter, and you go back down 27. That's been a nice, good run. Takes several, several hours. It's got a great spot because right there at the end of 26, which is a badge trail, is a pavilion. You can sit, you can eat lunch, you can do a snack, a break, whatever. And he said, yeah, but you got to watch out now at the bottom of 27. There's this big washout. And even going around it can be kind of dicey, even though it's listed as a kind of a blue. And it's always been an easy blue. For years, 27 years ago, 27 was closed. You couldn't even go down it. They closed it because they were filling in washouts. And 26 used to have this really, really cool um, Boulder Creek run. You would drive like through this creek for like half a mile. Hmm. Maybe not quite that much, but pretty close. And then there was a mudslide and that was gone. Well, now apparently that's coming back. So it's always changing. Like nature is always changing. You know, we were talking about Trail 38, little school bus. I said, you know, how bad has it gotten? Because I'm now seeing, I'm seeing people going up little school bus where this big rock is. It's just little school bus is just this giant freaking rock, size of a school bus in the middle of the trail, and the trail is to the right of this rock, and there's a go around on the left side, but it's not a four door line. Like it's tight even for two doors, if you call it a bypass. It's just this hard left, 180 back around, and then this not, you know all the way back around to the right. And then this really, really tight 90 left and you're down in this wash. So like you're looking at your, your, your head is right at the edge of this, this ledge, this washout. Mm-hmm. But the trail is you basically put your driver's tire up as far as you can freaking get and you give her a little bump. And, you know, you, there's a couple outlaw videos that's been, and I took Reaper over that a bunch of times. Well, apparently now because of people bumping, bumping, bumping on the right side, it's gotten dug out. It has exposed this rock on the right side. And I've seen people's 
bodies getting into this rock on the right side because they're not putting their tire in just the right spot. Mm -hmm. So now 38 carries the possibility of like a real possibility of it's body damage. damage. Unless you go somewhere that like with a super experienced spotter and like you're, you know, you're not too proud. The exit of 38's always been dumb. I don't go up that. That's a straight up buggy line. I always take the quick exit out to the right and up and then watch the idiots come come up the top. Um, but the actual one, that one obstacle, that big boulder right in the middle, that's got nasty. And if you don't, if you don't know that, you could have run it two years ago and you're like, oh, I know the line. I put my tire here. Buddy, that ain't the line now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, stuff changes. So I think... I almost think you kind of use the trail guide as I don't know maybe it just, maybe it's just a reference, kind yeah. of a starting point, and then you you combine that with somebody who has real and recent local experience that knows that trail system that knows that area and that can say yeah this is where you want to go oh you're built that way you got this kind of group okay you should go here here and here, um, and I've relied heavily on Lynn for that you know I, I've started out having my knowledge of the park. Um, and, I'm, and a park map, and then I go with Lynn, and I'm like, okay, well, how does this look? How does this look? Have you been up there recently? Have you been up there recently? So that we can have, because you know we're you know we're responsible for this event, so we got to make sure that we don't blow this. <laughs> we got to get it right. <laughs> right. And but like you said, you know, Jack out in Koh is kind of no, kind of a normal trail. I mean, it's a rock trail. Mm -hmm. You put that trail on. You put that trail anywhere else in the country, and it's a red. Yeah. It's a badge trail, it's a red, and it is a trail of epic freaking proportions. Mm -hmm. And most people are going to look at it and go, hell to the null. I looked at it and said hell to the null, but it was race course, I didn't have a choice. So I pulled, <laughs> we, we pulled the winch line and, and we just did yeah. it. But that's just what it is. And, and it would be way worse. Now you put that trail in the southeast, it's, unpa it's impassable. It's not doable. Yeah. Um, because there's not enough grip. Hammers, it's probably one of the easier trails at Hammers. I wouldn't say it's easier. Um you know, it's well, coming those, down was easier. Doable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it was way more yeah. doable. Now, Jack North going up Jack North was stupid. That's yeah. absolutely dumb. Like, it's just like, who, who wants to do this? Like, I kid you not, these trails and hammers are literally valleys in between mountains where rocks have just fallen down. And people are like, let's put tires on that. And then next year, that rock moves, that rock comes down, this one comes there. And now it's a totally different freaking obstacle. Like, who? I, it, it, it's why pre-running is so important and hammers and going and seeing the rocks because they change, but that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. The Northeast, the Southeast, the Midwest, the Far West, the Southwest, that these trails change other than the straight up desert and like the granite stuff out in like, like Arizona or something, mm -hmm. you know, maybe Parker or something. They don't change, but anything with rocks, trees, mud, dirt, anything, like that, it's going to change. And mother nature, yeah, mother nature, combined, man, so. mother nature combined with, with high traffic. Uh, yeah, traffic. It's gonna, well, that's the other one. Very good point. Namely, <clears throat> side by sides, I'm looking at you. Yeah. You know, everybody likes to say, well, you know, these trails have been around for a long time and guys on 33s used to do it. You're right. The trail wasn't the same 30 years ago. Nope. It may be having the same GPS coordinates where it starts and ends. But let me tell you something. Everything in the middle is not what your buddies TJ on 33s did in 1998 it's just not right. the same trail it's just not and it's not going to be the same 30 years from now there's bigger bigger vehicles longer wheelbase wider wheelbase bigger tires faster vehicles especially when the when the side by sides get out there and just rut the ever loving crap out of it these trails change so i don't think you can't absolutely trust a trail map with a rating system i think that's a good yeah. starting point maybe um but they always say never wheel alone. I say never wheel alone and never wheel with somebody who's never been there before because you don't know, you don't know what's coming. Yep. You know, you don't know. So I think I think somebody with real and recent <clears throat> experience is probably the way to do that. Maybe that's the way we fix it. You just make sure you got somebody with you that has what knows knows not just knows what they're doing, but knows that area. Somebody that's yeah. experienced in that area. Um, and if you just can't find that, then you know, sorry, be prepared. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, then a question that I get all the time, too, um, and this ties directly into this, is like, um, and speaking of this, I've actually got a really good mail, mailbag question at the end of this that will also tie into this, um, is kind of like what to be prepared for. And I know for trail days, I've, I've been messaged several times, um, which is why I have one of those mailbag questions for this, of what to expect um, kind of basically for, for each of the trail rating systems or... I guess the better way to word that is to like what level of build should they be rocking 
for, you know, a green, a blue or a black or, you know, the, the in-betweens on those as well. I know it's kind of a, it's not a hard and set fast rule, but do you have any general, I don't want to get like too, too specific here, but do you have any general recommendation of like tire size, lockers, axles, winch? I mean, not really because it's so much, it's so driver dependent. You know, there's trails that somebody who's been wheeling for years and years and years, you give them a stock Rubicon, they go out and kill a black. Yeah. You know, there, there, I could see a way where you could give me a stock Rubicon JL and I can go out, go out and run trail 16 at Windrock, which is traditionally something that somebody would tell me I'm a freaking idiot for, or, or Walden's Ridge, as long as I can actually get up on the Ridge. Mm -hmm. Um, I could do that now, you know, if you're a new wheeler to match that new stock rig, you're, you're going to question your life choices. Um, and that's not saying I'm better than anybody else. I'm not, trust me. I ran out of town a long time ago, but I do at least have some experience to rely on. At least I got that going for me and some pretty well-built Jeeps, um, that make me look better than I really am. Um, clearly, um, we'll get to that in adulting is hard. Um, cause I'm a keyboard warrior, but again, I will we'll get to that. So I think it's really hard to just say, well, this rig can do that. I mean, rigs can always do more than the driver. Always. Always. Yeah. Um, it, it just is what it is unless you put it, you know, the only time it would match is if you put like a super experienced wheeler in like a two inch lifted JL on 35s, like maybe then <laughs> the best driver in the world is that, but then the Jeep, the, the bigger the Jeep gets, the more capable it becomes. Mm -hmm. And there's always stuff that that Jeep can do that you don't think it can do. I mean, just go, you know, look at an ultra four race, look at a Baja race, look at any of these things that these vehicles are doing. They're capable of doing that. Um, you know, maybe not, maybe not as a built form. They're not capable of doing it as long, but you're not trying to go out the trail days and wheel a thousand miles, right? You're going, right. you're not doing the one thousand. You're going out for a weekend of wheeling. So, um, I think just make sure you have the rig for it, and then trust. I think a lot of you know some of these people are coming out because they wouldn't normally go out themselves. They've got, but this time they've got you know trail guides. They've got people that know the area. Mm -hmm. They've got good communications. They've got a good plan, and they can go out. Okay, I'm just along for the ride, and I'm going to do what I'm told. I think that's great. I think that is awesome way to look at it for a beginner or an end or an intermediate driver and or rig. Yeah. Now, that's not to say I think you should come out open open and go try trail twenty one. That no. <laughs> that's right. that's I mean, not you a thing. You do gotta understand there. what you're doing, right? Like, you know, I think pretty much most rigs, you know, as long as you got a winch, we're gonna get you through most of it that's not advanced. You know, yeah. even if you're even if you're limited slip and open, you're still gonna make it through ninety percent of what we got for you. And, and if not, okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll grab a winch and we'll either, we'll try to spot you through it. We'll try to teach you some things. Cause that's kind of the idea too, is, you know, share some of the knowledge that we have with the people who may not, who may not have that knowledge as we're leading, as we're spotting and say, look, this is, this is how you two pedal. This is how you, you know, the manual two thing, which, you know, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Some people don't know what I'm talking about. Those are, those are tips and tricks and stuff that we'll teach people as the weekend goes on. That for me, I've always said I like I like going out with beginners and kind of light intermediate because I like to see that transition from holy crap, morning one day one to invincible Superman or Superwoman, you know, last day in the evening and they're, they're you know they're ten foot tall and bulletproof and I love yeah. to see love to see that that happen that that kind of transition take place. So I look forward to that because I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. It happens every time whether it's a one day beginner wheeling trip at Yawari in North Carolina or a three day trip in Windrock or Moab, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There are changes. Um, there are changes that happen. And I, and I yeah. could name people that are massive on social media nowadays that I was there when they took their first obstacle um, mm -hmm. and, and had some emotions about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I won't call, I won't say any of them. Cause you know, like I said, they're, they're like big influences on social media now. And I remember being there. And good on them for getting to where they've gotten because a lot of that was on them. It wasn't me. They conquered that fear. They trusted their vehicle and their spotter. Sometimes it was me. Sometimes it was somebody else. And they learned. Yeah. And they kept going and kept progressing. And then they just took it off and it took off and it took a life of its own. And now they're like legit yeah. wheelers and, and know that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And now they can be that person that helps the next mm -hmm. generation of drivers. So Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and you, you hit on a good point, though, of having a built rig. But I also want to say that just because you have 40 inch tall tires doesn't mean you're going to get through something easier than someone with 35s or 37s if you don't have the supporting mods for those 40s. Um, which kind of leads me to my next question for you is 
what are some of the common like breaking points you see out on the trail that whether it be trail days or hammers or whatever that you should probably have some spare parts for, um, or just some general knowledge of how to fix on the trail. Um, in case you do run into a situation where that, that, you know, blue suddenly turns into a black, uh, top three. And in this order, axle shafts, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh, steering linkage, usually mm-hmm. ends, tie rod ends, drag link ends and drive shafts, usually rear drive shafts. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. axle shafts usually get broken because people put too much whoop how on it. Yeah. And they'll lock it up when they don't need to. And all of a sudden it's spinning, spinning, spinning. They're goosing it, goosing it, goosing it. It grabs traction. Everything's going in one motion, one motion. All of a sudden it stops, snap. And you hear it. It sounds like a gunshot. Mm-hmm. Um, number two would be steering linkage. And that's generally putting stuff. I see a lot of people do, um, putting steering in a bind. Yeah. And then trying to steer into it or they're dropping all their weight on one tire that's already all, you know, it's already under stress and pressure. And they break a tire rod end. Um, sometimes it's cheaper, whatever parts, but sometimes it, the part doesn't matter. Sometimes you just, it's bad driving, um, yeah. or bad spotting. Um, and then drive shafts. Generally I see drive shafts break or mess up because somebody gets them on an obstacle and they keep going, keep going, keep going, mm-hmm. keep going. And their spotter doesn't catch that and say, Oh, yeah. your drive shafts, your drive shafts on that rock or your drive shafts on that stump or whatever. Yeah. And they end up gashing the drive shaft and ripping it open. Yeah. Um, and common theme there is it's not the part. It's usually not the part's fault. It's the driver of the spotter's fault. Yeah. You know, a machine is very finite. It does what it does. It don't do no less. It don't do no more. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have, they have finite stress points and break points. And if you try to cross those one too many times, you're going to pay the price. Yeah. You're going to pay that entry fee. Um, and it's never any fun when somebody breaks. It's never any fun. Some breaks are, yeah, and some breaks are day ending trip ending, you know, whatever mm-hmm. vehicle ending and some yeah. very rarely, but breaks well, can be speaking, bad. So those are my, those that. would be the three for me that I <laughs> yeah. would say in that speaking, order, in that speaking order. Speaking of uh, some pretty heavy breakages though, uh, I kind of want to touch on something too, that um, unfortunately we have now experienced again within the outlaw world. Um, and this would be a day is done scenario of, we have now seen on multiple JLs, the transfer case exploding, um, yep. whether that's on road or on the trail um, or a mixture of the of both. Um, it's not a common thing that we're, you know, that like you said, steering linkages, drive shafts, U joints, whatever. Um, but it is something very serious that, that I think JL drivers should now be looking out for than, especially now that we're seeing more axle swapped JLs, more CAD or fad deleted jails, more upgraded stuff, running heavier tires. Um, I guess I'll let you explain like what's going on. You've seen it firsthand. I've just heard the stories and seen pictures um, of, of what's actually happening here. I have personally witnessed a few. Um, I've seen pictures seen and or heard of several others. Reaper has now fallen victim to this mm-hmm. for Ryan in, in Atlanta. Yeah. And it is the transfer case. Basically, exploding like somebody threw a grenade in it and walked away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's no 100%. You know, the first one I ever had, I talked to Scott up at um, Jeep, and I said, hey, man. And and his his thought was my thought. Like, there had to have been some undiagnosed vibration. Mm -hmm. There had to have been something that the driver ignored for a period of time. Because all of these, all of them, all of them happen at – at or near highway speed, all of them. Mm-hmm. And they're all in JL. So the deal in JL, for those that don't know, the front drive shaft does not turn with power in the JL. Right. There's a what's called a FAD, a front axle disconnect or a CAD, which is center axle disconnect. Different different letterings, same system. It's mm-hmm. a little box, passenger side about halfway on the long side of the axle tube, and there is a mechanism in there with a little fork, and it moves a collar. And that collar moves one way, and those two pieces of axle are disconnected, and it moves the other way, and they're locked in. That's Four wheel drive, basically, or that's that's a piece of the four wheel drive system, where there's actually power being delivered to the tires. Um, but because in its normal state, it's we'll call it the normal open state, there's not power being delivered to that front axle. Even though, um, like in the JK, there was always power being delivered to the drive shaft. You just weren't putting that through to the wheels. Right. The JL just does it differently. It was a fuel economy thing, I think. Um, but that normally doesn't spin. So that transfer case, 99% of the time, even in even in weekend warrior rigs, is not putting power to the front. When it is, 
It's doing it at low speed. What became popular, especially when JLS came out, is everybody assumed, myself included, that the two-piece drive shaft was weaker, like mm -hmm. significantly weaker. Mm -hmm. We know now that it's not that much weaker. It's really not. It's like a 5 to 7% strength difference overall. Yeah. But you saw people breaking fads, and you saw people breaking axles. I mean, you saw it. You saw the horror stories, and like we didn't want to do as humans. You see it happen two or three times, and it must have happened two or 3,000 times. And maybe it did, but I don't know. But I didn't. I, I think we overreacted a little bit. But aside from that, every company still does it. You know, they still have these one piece and two piece options for front drive shafts. But when you change that to a one piece and you kind of what we call delete the fat or delete the CAD, now that front drive shaft is spinning with power like a JK was. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't designed, the transfer case, this is what I think. I cannot prove this in court. Right. <laughs> Nobody from Jeep sue me. Okay? Don't take this Sorry. for gospel. This yeah. is not gospel. But you know, it's the only thing that makes sense because they've all been in either deleted fat deleted or axle swapped vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, every single one of them. And, and I've heard of several and they all have those commonalities. They are all either axle swapped or fat deleted and they were all at or near highway speed. So after talking to a couple of these drivers and some of them drivers I know, and I said like, are you sure that there wasn't some kind of undiagnosed? And I'm like, no, I'm telling you like this thing was freaking perfect. A couple of these were Jeeps mm -hmm. we built like yeah. outlaw built them. Yep. One of them, one of them now is Reaper. Um, yeah. Another one was a brand ambassadors 20. Now they've all been older. I will say this. They've all been, I have not heard of one newer than 2020 doing it. I've not heard of a 21 mm -hmm. doing it. I've not heard of a 22. I've not heard of a 23. I'm not, I mean, obviously not a 24. They've all, maybe there was one 2020, but I think most, if not all of them were 18s and 19s. I don't know if anything changed. I'm just stating the obvious. Maybe it's a mileage thing. I don't know, but they all had, they were all out of warranty. They were all, over their warranty mileage and, and some by considerable amounts and some had been axle swap for a while. Some hadn't, I mean, it was, there was no rhyme or reason to that, mm -hmm. but they all did match at least those two criteria. So what I think is that I think the engineers at Jeep just that, you know, they, they came up with this great idea, what they thought was a great idea and they really didn't engineer it to be turned like that the front all the time. Now, what, what specifically they didn't engineer, what specifically is causing that? I, I don't know. Um, I don't have the time to sit there and figure it out. Um, I, I just don't, but it, it just seems too, it's too much of a coincidence to think that that doesn't have something to do with it and that it's the mm -hmm. transfer case blowing up. It's clearly something in the transfer case. And yeah. when you say highway speed, okay, that's a lot of RPMs. And when you say fad deleted or axle swap, because if it's axle swapped, it's basically fad deleted. It's a solid yeah. axle shaft in that right front. Right. So those are the commonalities. I don't know what other I, I don't know what other conclusion you draw. Yeah, um, it's, it's too much heat building up in the transfer case and something. I don't like I don't know if it's too much heat. If it's something that wasn't meant to spin that fast for that long, if it's a bearing letting go that was maybe done as a cost. And again, don't take this as gospel. I don't know. I'm not disparaging right. Jeep. Um, I am still a fan of Jeep. That does not change my opinion of Jeep. You know, I, I've seen way too many times in the world, not just in off-road, where one one little overlook thing, nobody intended for it to be a problem, but it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's not a Jeep problem, really, because you're modifying a system. And all Jeep has to do is go, well, you modified a system that wasn't designed to run that right way. And they're right. We did. Right. Mm -hmm. We did. We absolutely did. We've lifted them. We put big-ass tires on them. We've changed, the, we've changed axles out. We've changed axles out. We've absolutely modified it away from the original what they designed it, how they designed it to run. That's how they engineered it. It's not their responsibility to mo to engineer it for what we're going to do to it. True. They know we're going to do stuff to it, but it's not their job. They're not legally obligated to make that thing do what we're supposed to do. If they if they were supposed to do that, I could sue them for all the PCM problems in the race car. <laughs> That's they're not engineering a Jeep Wrangler for Ultra yeah. Four racing, right? And they're not engineering it for Curry Sixties, right? They're just not. So. I think it's a risk. Um, it is a risk, I think. But I just, I don't know that it's a risk. I don't, I don't, it wouldn't change my opinion because there's, there's thousands and thousands of axle swapped and deleted. And I've heard of less than a hundred. There's less than a hundred. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not a, a, a prevalent problem. And yeah. none of the ones I've talked to, because immediately I would think, well, something was wrong. There was some undiagnosed vibration. It was in the front end. It was it was translating up the drive shaft and into the transfer case, and it wiggle 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 boom, mm -hmm. like that makes sense to me. 
but the people, the drivers that I've talked to, and they're people that I trust, unless they're lying to me to my face. <laughs> Then, you know, one was driving down the highway in like Indiana or something. He's like, yeah, I was doing like 75 miles an hour. It was perfect. He's like, never knew a Jeep could drive that good. He just had a new suspension system, but I was like rock crawler with some coilovers. He's like, yeah. I was just enjoying the crap out of my Jeep. It was going awesome. I just finished going out to Colorado and was coming home and kaboom. Mm -hmm. Absolutely kaboom. Um, now, Reaper, I know that it didn't have an undiagnosed front end problem because I built the front end and I drove it. And I know unless it developed some kind of vibration, but I also know Ryan. And yeah. if there was some kind of vibration in the front end, Ryan would have taken it apart and figured out what the vibration in the front oh, end very is. So quickly. Yeah. I tend to believe that the I didn't have an undiagnosed vibration story. I tend to believe most of those that told me that wasn't the issue. I tend to believe them. Yeah. So I think it's an engineering thing. But again, I'm not blaming Jeep because, again, it's not Jeep's job to modify these things or to engineer them for how we're going to modify them. You know, it's not their job. I I would love it if they did, and I would love it maybe if it was tougher or stronger or whatever. But there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure on these manufacturers to meet fuel economy standards and safety mm -hmm. standards. And that has become their primary goal to where, yeah, we want it to look good. We want it to perform, but we also have to meet these. They don't have a choice. Right. You know, they can change aesthetics. They can add a feature. They can delete a feature. There's a lot of things they can do. But there's some things that there's just, just non-negotiable. It's a non-starter. And mm -hmm. safety standards, fuel economy standards, those just aren't. You know, it's the reason they did, like, if you look at a JK, roll cage, stock, to a JL, it's completely different. That's why. It's And people are like, well, it's a very, very thin. You look at that cage on the new JL, it's very thin. Mm -hmm. It's the gauge on it's like, you're like, what? But whatever the heck they made that steel out of, it is the hardest crap on earth. <laughs> I'm not yeah. kidding you. And it is super, yeah. super hard. You have to have special like hardened cobalt drill bits to put a sport cage in there and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they are super freaking strong, even though they are super thin wall. Mm -hmm. They hold up. And it doesn't take too many YouTube videos to see that these frame, that these roll cages in these Wranglers hold up, especially in the JL and the JT. It's a totally new technology. But, you know, it's a weird shape. Well, it was done that way on purpose. You know, you got, you got, you got crumple zones. Well, it was done that way on purpose. They do these things on purpose. They know what they're doing and they did it for a reason. They did it for a purpose. So, um, there's a lot of pressure on them. A lot of pressure, man. It is, I, I don't envy them for the, for the standards they have to meet. So I'm, you know, weight is a big one because that's fuel economy and then all that safety stuff, but you don't want to go too light. Like you don't want to make it a Fiero. Like it's, it's a delicate, it's a delicate balancing act, man. It's a fine line to walk, and I don't envy them at all. I think overall, Jeep does a great job. I think they do. I think they give us yeah, absolutely a, a very safe vehicle um, for what it is. I mean, it's not it's not stupid, uneconomical fuel wise. It's not dumb. Now, when you modify it, but whatever. But in its stock form, it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not sure. an uncomfortable riding vehicle, especially for solid mm -hmm. axle. It's not bad. You know, they've given us some creature comforts. Good on them for the 18 and good on them again for hitting again in the 24. So I think they're doing a good job. So patting them on the back. And 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 I don't want to just say Bronco or, or just say Jeep. You know, Ford did it too with the Bronco. Mm -hmm. And they're doing, the, you know, they're doing a lot. They're doing kind of, the, I don't know if they're doing the best they can because, you know, the almighty dollar rules at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But they're working within a very, very tight set of strict, strict policies, regulations, laws, ordinances, whatever. And they still have to produce a vehicle at the end of the day that doesn't cost $100,000 unless you're a 392. Um, yep. You know, and that's a lot of why they've gotten so expensive. This stuff isn't cheap. I, you know, and they're making a profit, yes, but you're in business to make profit, right? Okay. If it's that bad, don't buy it. Like, right. If you're, if you're one of those guys, you're not listening to this podcast anyway. But if you're listening to this podcast, yeah, probably you've not. already bought one of those vehicles anyway, <clears throat> or you're about to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do what we can. We can bitch about the price. I'll bitch about it too, but it's not going to change it. It just is what it is. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, I hate it, just something that's I really wanted to just m make people aware of that there is now some commonalities that we're seeing. We now are we now have a little bit more data to kind of put some stuff together to say that we think it might be this. And again, not gospel. Don't don't quote this. I mean, it's definitely you. related to that. I just don't yeah. know the specific yeah, but point I don't of want, failure. If it goes something goes wrong, I don't want someone taking their jail to the dealership and be like, well, the guys from Outlaw Off Road said this, and um. Well, you can't so. anyway, right? You can't do that anyway. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> but uh, you modified yeah. the vehicle. You got no legal leg to stand on. So, oh, yeah. Well. But All overall, right. I just wanted that to be something that we uh we do touch on, and it's something I want to keep track of in the future to see if that happens again. 
and maybe we do put some data points together. Um, but it's just something to be aware of, especially if you got an axle swapped or, or fad rig, um, especially on the trail if you're driving to and from the trail um, in that rig on high. I think the big thing the, there, if you do have a vibration in your drive line, get it checked out. Yeah, very quickly. Um, because that may be a sign of something coming. Don't don't ignore it. If you're if you're fad deleted, CAD deleted, or your axle swapped, and you have some kind of drive line vibration, get it checked out. Um, these could have hurt people. Luckily, nobody's been hurt. But when metal pieces go flying up into the pan, into the uh, where the transmission is, mm -hmm. um, that could be yeah. a bad thing. Yeah, it well, could take somebody's leg to, out. To like, your leg, it hasn't. It's not a good thing. <laughs> it hasn't. But I've yeah. seen the carnage that's been left behind, oh, and yeah. it absolutely could. So yeah, um, yeah, that's where I'm going to yeah. leave that. Yeah, absolutely. On that note, hey, did you hear? Uh, this was I don't think this was in there, but this was something that was coming up. Did you hear Wheel Pros maybe going bankrupt? I did. I saw that yesterday. Yeah. And whew. what about Metal Cloak sending out a letter to dealers mm -hmm. talking about Wheel Pro going into bankruptcy? I'm like, dude, that was I, a low I, move. That's I like that was a, that's like I Wendy's that level was, trolling. Yeah, that was a super, super, super low move. I think that was um, <laughs> that was ice I've, cold. I've never seen a company try to aim so low so fast. Um, that was woo. that was pretty bad. Like that, that was shots fired right that there. Was bad. Um, <laughs> that was pretty. That was ice yeah. cold. Yeah. So I guess they obviously, you know, there was an investment group in. I guess they took a bunch of loans out to do that expansion when they. They bought uh, and and no, in no uncertain order, they bought Terraflex. They bought you know, especially the the big one was when they bought Transamerica. Yeah, and all those brands, like Smitty Built and Rubicon Express and Procomp and all that, and they bought the Transamerican wholesale stuff, and they bought four wheel mm -hmm. parts and all that stuff that came in that deal. You know, that wasn't that wasn't Wheel Pro's money. Apparently, that was clearly like Capital's money. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, apparently, there is some money that is supposed to change hands from one party to the other that is not changing hands. And the word on the street is that as as soon as next week, you could see Wheel Pros, um, owner of brands such as Fuel Off Road, KMC, Terraflex, Ready Lift, big big names, four wheel parts, mm -hmm. that they could be going into bankruptcy. Now, I don't think that means fuel wheels are going away. Um, yeah, but it is going to cause some things. I don't know. I don't know. I think some brands are probably not going to. Um, I know they bought some of those brands just for the intellectual property, and they were going to mm -hmm. close the brands down anyway. I don't know. I don't know how that how that plays out, but it was definitely it's something that we've alluded to before. I had heard about it a while ago, but I didn't like throw out a lot of names yet. Yeah. Um, we kind of got to in the last last episode because it was coming out. But that email that went out earlier this week from Metal yeah. Cloak, I'm like, bro, why? Like, I don't understand why. I've even got a copy of it because it I got sent to us. We're Metal Cloak dealers, yeah. So we got you know we were on that list. And it actually, the whole the, uh, screenshot of it got shared into a Facebook group that I'm in that's an off-road shop owners group, and it got shared into that. And the, the the universal opinion was that was a pretty low. That was pretty. That was pretty dirty. Yeah, pretty dirty. I mean, it's business. I you know, business is, yeah. business is brutal, but that was, that was cold from it Metal was, Cloak. It was a I don't low, know who made that call, ball. but it was cold. Yeah. Ice cold. But I don't um, know if we'll see any of those brands completely go away, um, but I do feel like we'll see some lines within those brands kind of disappear. Um, well, maybe like if we're talking wheels, maybe a couple of those lines of wheels will discontinue a couple of designs of those wheels to kind of streamline yeah. in on the big sellers. Maybe, um, Terraflex maybe might stop selling a couple of the, the low hanging fruit and, and try to go for the more common stuff that they're selling. Same thing with ready lift. Maybe they discontinue a couple models. Maybe your, your 1996 Ranger doesn't have a, a suspension from <laughs> ready lift anymore. Um, I don't think we'll see those brands go away. Uh, I think they're they're pretty well established um, and respected. Um, so hopefully we see that continue to go to to move forward. But who knows what the the future holds with that? It's, yeah, when we'll give you an update if they on. file bankruptcy next week. We'll tell yeah. you about it on next week's episode. Yeah, no, we'll we'll definitely bring this into the podcast and talk about it. Yeah. I think that that falls directly in line with our industry oh absolutely news and, and absolutely. state of the industry. And we are we're, we're big wheel pro dealers as outlaw. Yeah, we're huge wheel. Absolutely. We're in. We are in deep with wheel pros. Yeah. We do a lot of business with wheel pro. We do a lot of business with them. So it'll be interesting to right. see that, you know, I mean, if we have to, we'll go somewhere else. But I mean, we do like those guys. Um, they've been good to us over the years. We've been good to them. It's a pretty good relationship. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but now without further ado, we're going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of a shortened version of it. I don't want to get too much into it of adulting is hard. 
I'm, I'm excited. Where I this. scour the internet for people who <laughs> should know better. It is basically right. that. I am scouring the internet for those of you out there. You should just know better. You are grown adults. And my first shout out goes to everybody who asked the question on all these Facebook groups of are these guys legit? And it's taking screenshots and pictures of all of these pages that are Jeep spare parts, accessories, Jeep Bronco, this. They're all scams. They're all scams. <laughs> They're all scams. <laughs> I don't know why anybody thinks this is legit at this point. Like, come on. And now they've even gotten to the point where not only are they posting up, but they're getting people to go review them and post their business in the group. But it's like, you know, they're not even speaking English. Their, their mm -hmm. grammar is terrible. Their spelling is terrible. These guys are the awesome. They are, they are good, legit. Like, it, come on. And then somebody's <laughs> like, are these guys legit? I really want to buy my, I really want to buy my half doors. And they say they got them for $500. No, your $500 is gone, Pookie. It is gone. <laughs> they're all scams. You should know better. Adulting yeah. is hard, but you should know better. Right. Okay, that was first one. Second one, I've got some. I got some. There, there was one that I wanted to get a screenshot of. I know his name is Andrew Met. I can't pronounce his last name, but he blocked me and deleted the post before I could screenshot it. <laughs> and Mister Andrew was in a group oh, talking no. about some lift kits that he had access to, mm -hmm. and there were three lift kits. One was a long arm, and two were not long arms. And he said. They're all the same price. I said, okay. So I'm assuming the long arm was slightly used or it was take off or it was on a deal or something. But they were all about the same price. And the one caveat he had was, I want maximum articulation and I don't want to mess up my on-ride road or my on-road ride. There we go. I should know better. Adulting is hard. Uh, I should have better speech. <laughs> and, and I commented. I was like, dude, the answer's in the question, man. Like, you've already answered your question. You're comparing apples to oranges here. The point of a long arm suspension is to do exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. So if you can get a long arm for the same price as a short arm, why are we even having this conversation? Right. Long arms are there specifically to address the altered characteristics of a vehicle on the road when it's lifted. You're changing the bumps. You're, you're changing the geometry. You're making it better if it's done right for on road driving ability. It just it just is what it is. You're improving the, the on road geometry. And off-road, you're getting, obviously, maximum articulation because you are on long arm. Like, it's not that hard to figure out. So why are we even, why are we even asking this question? And they threw something in about the steering he had already chosen. He, he was already locked in on steering. And it was not like a top steering brand. I said, well, you're, you're claiming you know all this stuff, but then you're telling me other stuff that, that lets me know that maybe you don't know as much as you say you do. So... I'm going to tell you right now, just go with the long arm kit. Like there's no reason to have any conversation here. So he got upset. <laughs> he got real upset. And apparently he is a very qualified Jeep builder. Um, don't know where that qualification comes from. He's built Jeeps before he knows. And long arms have always butchered his on-road ride. Does so I responded. qualified to me. I was like, okay, I don't know what Jeeps you've built, but you've either built them wrong or you've built them with subpar prop parts. Period. Yeah. End of story. You're, 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 everything you're saying is counterintuitive to mm -hmm. physics, geometry. You're just wrong. Like, you're just wrong. Like, it's fine. People are wrong. This is Facebook. It happens. But I'm like, your, your only qualifier was maximum articulation, on road drivability. You just made the sales pitch for long arm suspension. Yes. You literally just made the sales pitch for long arm, long arm suspension. And he just did not agree with that. He just did not agree with that. And he called me and told me I was a keyboard warrior and that clearly I had never wheeled before. <laughs> and I didn't know what for, I, I mean, he just went, he just lit into me. I'm used to that. It happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't go on these posts and say who I am, what I do. I don't talk right. about racing. I don't talk about outlaw. I don't no. do that. Now that's easy to find out. You hover over my name. It comes up. Or you click on my name, you go to my Facebook profile, whatever it comes up. But clearly, people are just lazy. Like, yeah. you gotta be, at, at the very least, I know a little something. I don't know a lot. I don't. I don't know a lot. But that stuff know. I'm on, I, <laughs> I know that. Yeah. There's a lot of things in this world I don't know. I know that. And I know that he made the sales pitch for long arm suspension 100%. And I know that he was wrong. Um, I don't know the lottery numbers for tonight, but I know that he was wrong. And before I, I really, really just wanted to respond back and tell him to click on my name. But I was like, I don't do that. That's, that's, that's kind of ego. Like, don't do that. 
And while I'm typing out another response, trying to kind of cool the temperature a little bit, this post is no longer available. <laughs> kind of funny. He had just delete. He had just blocked me. He deleted. He deleted the original comment, and then uh, of course that deleted everything below that comment, and then he mm-hmm. blocked me. So to Andrew, mes mes gay mesky mesky whatever mescalito. I don't know. Mescalitos are delicious. Um, yeah, you're just wrong. Like, and it's fine. Like you don't do it for a living. Now, if I was wrong and I do it for a living, that's bad. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's real bad. Um, and then we'd have to do another segment of where Doug was right, where Doug was wrong. And I would do that if I was wrong. But in this case, I was absolutely not wrong. So that guy, I know adulting is hard, but you should know better. Um, here's one that's kind of a lot shorter, but it's kind of funny. We had a post, and and I've actually this actually this girl actually reached out to me after I made a comment on her post, and come to find out it really wasn't her fault. I'll get into it in a minute. But she made this post in, and this is on a Jeep some kind of Jeep Wrangler thing. And she says, I'm proud of myself. I was able to change out the grill on my JL without taking the entire bumper off. I had to remove the original grill while bumper was still attached at the base. I was not comfortable with quote unquote yanking it. So I kept on while removing the original grill. My comment was simply, hold on. Um, (laughs) When was taking the bumper off for a grill (laughs) insert? It was a grill insert. Ever in play. Um, hmm. Again, I know adulting is hard. You should know better. I mean, do you want to do you round, want a round of applause or a box of cookies oh, for pulling out? She was proud of herself. Tabs? Well, she reached I out mean, to me and eventually she claims that this insert company in their directions say you have to remove the bumper. Do okay. I believe that? No. no. I don't believe that. Unless, unless it's like some cheap Chinese company or something. I don't, it's possible. Yeah. I doubt it. I doubt it, but it's possible. But yeah, to remove a bumper to put a grill insert, mm. I know adulting is hard, but you should know better. <laughs> you should absolutely yeah. know better. <laughs> yeah. I had That's another one. I'm going to I'm gonna do it next week. It is like this guy yeah, that works at a we dealership. We need to bring this out. I just like, rambled on, but yeah. it's way too long. So on next no, week's episode, we will do another edition of Adulting is Hard, and no, this is going to be a good one. I think that we need to add this into the episode of... <laughs> <laughs> mailbag questions and adulting is hard um, because I see this all the time and I see a lot of really cringy stuff in Jeep groups that yep, yep. that I don't want to call them out in a mailbag question and, and then they come back and bite me in the ass but at some <laughs> point you've got to like you got to be an on. adult man like especially some of these posts that are like just dropping by to send a picture of my Jeep they saying hello thanks for adding me to the group like and then the worst ones are like, you guys are a bunch of assholes and making fun of me and I'm leaving this group. I'm like, d- don't d- announce your departure. Just fucking. At least those, at least those won't get you listed on a, a segment of adulting <laughs> is hard, but it is. Yeah, adulting true. is hard. Um, adulting is hard. We're gonna, we're gonna but find but you all should know this. better. Uh, yeah, yeah. You should all absolutely. know better. If uh, you find a, an adulting is hard worthy uh, post or something on Facebook, Please, please, for the love of the Lord, send it to me. Screenshot. Because some of these guys just need to be called out. Absolutely. Now, if it's really, really Absolutely. stupid and embarrassing, I'm not gonna like like that girl there with the bumper. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call her out by name or say what group it was in. But the other guy, like he totally earned it. Like you're just an idiot. Hundred percent earned it. Hundred <laughs> percent an idiot. Yeah. I'm gonna go try to find him and like put his profile pick up next week or something. But he was just he was just <laughs> dumb. Like that's just that's just dumb. Yeah. That's just. Well, an absolute idiot. If I'm gonna right argue the, with somebody on Facebook. I'm going to at least click on and be like, is this somebody I actually want to argue with? Or is this somebody I just want to walk away? Because yeah. sometimes, I mean, honestly, sometimes it's just fun for me. Like, I don't really <laughs> need to do it, but it's just fun for me. Like, I'm sitting on my computer anyway. I'm doing work. I'm doing stuff. And it's I'm just, killer. I'm just, I'm just having fun. So I think I'm going to save this one. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put this one in the, uh, for next week. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that next week. <laughs> good deal. It's good. Good. All right, yep, well, let's segue saved. right into the mailbag questions. Um, and <laughs> All right, this hit is me the one that, that honestly kind of – the reason I wanted to talk about, you know, different trail ratings and everything. Um, it's a close friend of mine. I'm not going to say name. Um, but he said, I really wanted to wheel with you guys at Windrock for trail days. Uh, my rig is still fairly stock. Realistically, what should I be looking to upgrade so that I can run most of Windrock or East Coast trails without breaking everything? Are 40s needed? Will 37s work? Uh, what other supporting mods? Yeah, 37s work. I mean, lift it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because at 37s, you can usually get away without having to, like, spend a bunch of money on, like, hydro steering and stuff like that. Right. Um, 
if you want to do most of the East Coast, lift it, throw some beadlocks on there, throw some 37s on there, at least an RT, you know, RTMT, uh, because we are on the East Coast. Rock sliders, bumpers, winch. The Maybe some stuff. skid plates if yeah. you want to do some big rocky stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it just, there's really not much more you have to do. Yeah. I mean, at some point, you're going to have to change your front drive shaft. You know, look at a drive shaft that's in the budget, but that's pretty much, that'll pretty much get you there to mm-hmm. do. 85 percent of what's out here i mean windrock's a little different but i mean most of the trails of windrock can't even get on as a jeep or a bronco or, or anyway because it's side by side and yeah. they're too narrow you can't take full body stuff on there um but i'd say like 40 percent is full body stuff mm-hmm. um and of that 40 percent, you'll be able to do 80 85 percent of that maybe even a little bit more if the driver mm-hmm. the driver changes your percentage um yeah. with just that with just that little with just that list i had right there yeah for sure yeah that's kind of was my th- i was yeah. This is my thoughts as well. You yeah. don't need a whole lot. You don't need 40s. Um, you can definitely get by with 37s with some supporting mods. So uh, moving right along, this one's from the Wrangler JKJLJT owners group. Um, this is one that I somehow just got added into. I didn't know this one existed. Um, but this one I think is a is a common question that I've, I've heard about. Um, I've owned YJs and TJs in the past. I'm now looking to buy my first newer Jeep. She didn't, she didn't say new, but newer Jeep. What year models and engines do I stay away from, and what do I need to look for as, pro- as far as "quote unquote" problem areas are concerned? I mean, stay away from the 07 to eleven just because I don't like the three eight. But they're, she's talking yeah. about newer, so I'm going to assume JL because that's assume, we're seven but, model yeah. years into the JL now. Yeah, 21, 22, 23, 24, seven. Yeah, twenty four yeah. is the seventh model year. Um, so I, I don't think there's any models. I don't think there's any engines to stay away from. Mm-hmm. Um, I could I could make an argument for any of them up to and including the 392 and the four by e. Yeah. Um. You know, just you got to look at your situation and what motor works for you. Is it a weekend warrior? Is it a pavement pounder? Is it? Are you going to wheel it? Whatever. Um. But I could make the argument for any of those motors. I could also make the argument against any of those motors. Um. The common failure points. I mean, the, the, the common failure points are the little stuff. What was that little thing we talked about last week with the with the visor and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Like. You know, the aux battery system kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, that's kind of a terrible thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm also not a huge fan of e-torque because it's another thing I can nail on a rock underneath. Right. So, I mean, you, again, I could make the sales pitch or the anti-sales pitch on any of that stuff. You know, 392, lots of freaking power, kind of heavy, mm-hmm. maybe too much power, bad fuel economy. I mean, there's all kinds of arguments for and against. But I think the overall good is that, look, you're coming out of a TJYJ and you're going to a JL. Your it's world's right about to difference. change. Yeah, even it going is, from JK to Oh, my is, Lord. Is Just riding down the difference. dirt road to the trail, you're going to notice mm-hmm. a massive difference. So I would abs- I would just say buy that. Take advantage of the new technology. You know, you got trail cams now. You can even get a, you can get a front one. You, got, you already got the real one, obviously. Um, the wheelbase <clears> is, is helpful. I think it's more helpful than it is detrimental, I think. Yeah. Um, the seats, the suspension, the steering is better. The... It's all better. The electronics are better. I mean, you can wheel with your top off in the winter and have heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Like, you know, mm-hmm. just take advantage of all of that. I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, what motor do I get? I, I, yeah. I don't think I'd worry about that. I really don't. If you're going to wheel it and you're not really confident in it, I wouldn't get a 4 by e for all the reasons I've said about my 4 by e It takes some learning and some experience to know kind of how to wheel that thing. Um, but I think if you're going to wheel it, the 2 is fine. Totally good. The 392 is fine. Hell, the diesel's great. Yeah. Um, can't get one now, but if you're going to get a newer one and not a brand new one, <clears throat> right? The diesel's great. And then of course the old 36 is fine. Reaper was a 36. I got my 36 is 36 is totally fine. Um, so I I wouldn't spend too much. I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about that. Just get the options that you want for the comfort. Enjoy that because that's going to be the biggest difference to you. Yeah. And then just learn how to drive the bigger vehicle before you go getting crazy with other stuff. Yeah. And I, the only thing I, I have to add to that it. is if you're looking, we'll just call newer. She didn't put it a, a, a year yeah. range. Yeah. Uh, I assume most people are financing. Financing usually will cover up to 10 years um, for the price that some of these JKs are selling at. I would just honestly stay away from JK. So like it's nothing against a JK. I, I've, I've owned two of them. Um, I loved them. But for the prices that jails are coming down to with the options they have a moderately equipped sport S JL. 
I think rides, drives, and feels way miles better than even a nicer mm-hmm. in JK. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And we're not obviously comparing apples to apples here. They're apples to oranges for sure. But with those prices and the creature comfort you get with a JL, I would just I would be hard pressed to ever consider a JK, um, unless you're buying like a two door sport. Um, yeah, like 2015 <laughs> something yeah. on the super super yeah. super cheap end. Um, but yeah, that's, that's otherwise engine wise, I've, I've have experience with all those engines and there's not a bad engine yeah. in the JL on. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I would say any of them, I wouldn't yeah. spend any time worrying about that. No, nah. you know, find a deal, find the one that's got the options you want that, you know, go drive it. If it's comfortable, mm-hmm. I wouldn't worry too much about the motor. Just get one that you like the color, that you like the interior, you like the options and go be yeah. happy with it. Yeah, you, cause absolutely. you will be happy with it. Absolutely. Uh, last question I have uh, from our favorite group ever, Gladiators Only. Um, this one might be an adulting is hard. I, whew, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna throw it, we got. I'm gonna throw it at you. On a borderline one. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it at you and let you see what you think. Um, do cold air intakes actually make horsepower gains on these? Man, adulting is hard. <laughs> adulting is hard. What. <laughs> no, uh, no. Of course yeah, it that's, doesn't. That's the easiest. It's no, freaking snake ever. oil. Yeah. Now, does it make cool <laughs> sounds? Yeah, of course it does. Of course. But unless you now, unless you, I think we've, ta- I think we've talked about this before, maybe not. We unless you then, have, with your sure. exhaust and with your intake, you change the exhaust because you can only put out what you can only take in what you can put out. Mm-hmm. And now you've got to change your timing. You got to change your fuel injection. You're going to have to deliver more fuel. You're not doing that, guys. You're not. You're not going to tune it and do all that. If you no. tuned it, yeah, maybe. But you're not. But just by simply slapping on a cold air intake, it's going to sound maybe cooler if you like that, and it might look better in your Instagram post. But no, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, that's going to. And in fact, it might actually hurt. It will actually hurt your fuel economy. Yeah, because you're throwing off your air to fuel ratio now. Well, and you're messing with the temperature of the air coming in, which is a density mm-hmm. thing. Um, you know. Cold air is a different density. Cooler, I guess. It's not even cold because it's still yeah. pulling air from the engine. But a different temperature of air is a different density. Mm-hmm. And the less dense the air is, the more you need. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to throw off that whole stoichiometric you know, ratio. And I, I get that I am a keyboard warrior and I have no wheeling experience. And I get all that. <laughs> Mr. Mesky or whatever your name was. I get all that. I get that I am, again, it's on my name today, keyboard warrior. I get that I got all that and I don't know anything. But no, cold air intakes mean nothing other than for up here and i get that adulting is hard but you should know better yeah <laughs> i love ending it like that that's great <laughs> that's, a, that's a solid ending yeah <laughs> oh man i love it but adulting is hard sometimes man it is. it is we make light of it but adulting can be hard man you gotta pay bills and stuff and you gotta be like i don't know you gotta you gotta like make decisions you gotta do things for yourself you can't call mom and dad and make them do it for you it's tough very hard. <laughs> right. Yeah, adulting is hard. It is. Well, we already have. I already have next week's adulting is hard lined up. It's going to be a, that that first one's That's going to be a good one. I'm saving it. Yeah, it's, I can't wait to hear that. It's one. in the old phone memory banks for next week. It's a it's a long rambling post, but it's. I'll, I'll tease it by saying this: it's a guy who actually works at a dealership, and is asking like basic Jeep questions. Mm. Oh, it's gold. Yep, but it Can't rambles. It's long, <laughs> and I gotta like break it down. So we we didn't have time to do it today. So right. we're gonna end. We'll end today pretty much right here, because um, these these people that are watching and listening to us have things to do. You got things to do. I got things to do. So uh, we will end it right there. As always, uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Appreciate you stopping by, listening to us, watching us, whatever. Uh, if you were watching us, you got the special little zip zip zip. You know the pizzazz today um, that Caleb's gonna edit in here and put in do his magic uh, that he does. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Uh, don't forget wherever you find us, YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, whatever. Don't forget to like, subscribe, drop us a five star rating on Apple and Spotify. Uh, drop a comment on YouTube. If you've got anything you want to hear, got an idea for adulting is hard. Got to think something for a mailbag. Maybe you've got something for a where Doug was right, where Doug was wrong. I've got no problem with that. Or you just want to spit out some hater aid and hope that I respond to you in another episode. Cause you know, I love to do that. I do love the hater aid. I love to drink it and I love to poof, spit it right back out. Hock to I had to throw that in there. <laughs> mm. 
Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget, please like and subscribe. Make that notification bell so you can see every time that we drop a new episode of Dirt to Dust. Uh, and again, we are Dirt to Dust. We are presented by Outlaw Off-Road. We do thank you guys for stopping by. Make sure you check us out next week on the next episode. But until then, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your morning. Enjoy your evening. Drink that cup of coffee, whatever, that glass of wine, that beer, whatever. Hopefully there's some bourbon in your future, maybe. And we will see you down the road. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.